and welcome to a special edition of the morning show live on my talk on this Wednesday, March 13th, 2024. I'm Jace with Lex and Holly, and we are thrilled to be joined by Marjorie as we pay tribute to oh. our dad and our mom, Ian and Marjorie on my talk 1071. There we go. My voice. Crunch- oh, <laughs> your men. My men. Yeah. <laughs> There's crunchy and itchy, or however I used to call them. But anyway, um, well, I, this hour is going to be great because we're joined by two people who barely have security clearance into our building anymore. But that's fine. Uh, yeah. Um, but, they made it. but somehow they got through the gate. Uh, we're talking <laughs> barely. <laughs> barely. I'm not we're joking, t- actually. Yeah, barely. Yeah. <laughs> we're talking about our dear friends, Colleen Lindstrom oh. and the one. The only, the master of Ian's 150 clips that he would request every day, producer Paul Black. There we go. Good morning. Uh, Paul, do you have the clips for this uh, hour ready to go? (laughs) I I did want to say, you you cut that intro off, and we needed that whole intro every single morning. Ian would drive me crazy. Marjorie, how often was he on time Uh, at the beginning of the show? Uh, Never. Uh, Every time I confronted him, he had this weird adrenaline rush need Mm -hmm. to hear the intro start in his car in the parking lot. No. Oh, yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah. So that's that's why the intro was so long because so he had time from his car to get to the studio. Okay, can I punctuate this by <laughs> telling people yeah. about the layout of this building? It is amazing. <laughs> yeah. the, it is not a quick run from Mm-mm. the parking yeah. lot up to where we are. You have to go. You have to snake through the bowels of the building. Yes, and come up the steps. There's like ups and downs and arounds and up, and then you arrive in the studio. It is a, I don't know. I'm gonna say five minute walk. And and Polly, he was that way always. Always. Oh, okay. Always in his career. He always just, liked just in time. Just in time. Because oh. he liked the adrenaline of coming on and and just starting the show. But it it caused producers for thirty years uh heart yes. palpitations. But that was his thing. I can vouch for ten thing. of those years. Yes, for ten of those. But it was always that way. It was always that way. He would be I... in bed. And the morning, like he was always did mornings oh. and I'd be like, you kind of need to go. He's like, I got it. I got it. And he just liked to just walk in like a second before the show was supposed to start. And more often than not, would you say, Paulie, he was on time, but it was always really close. <laughs> Look at Paulie's Paulie, face. You, to that. Like, you have to answer that. that. I'm trying to come up with a percentage. <laughs> I would say 60 to 70 percent of the time there he was go. on time yep but that was the way he was going to start the show every morning every morning i did not know that he sat in the parking lot yep. till the open started yeah he liked to hear the open in his car in the parking lot mm-hmm. very particular man very i particular. love that <laughs> paul i we were laughing in our first hour with alexis and holly and i and i want to start here we because alexis and i were new at the time we um, admired you. Uh, we feared for you sometimes. Uh, we laughed about you because we knew how many audio clips Ian would request on any given day. And Lex and I joked because uh, it was just the two of us. Lex looked at me one day in by Lori and Julie's double wide, and she goes, basically, Bitch, I ain't doing that. Like I just <laughs> FYI, like I ain't doing that. Don't you don't you even don't you even submit clips. I am Paul Black. I ain't doing that. It's Somebody just me and you. Time cue. Okay, done. Yeah. Yeah. But beyond that, it wasn't so it was yes, there were tons of clips yes. and we didn't yeah. use all of them. But it was even clips during the show yeah. where he would oh, yeah. have the TV on and Good Morning America was interviewing oh, yeah. Will Smith. Yeah. And they would finish, and he'd go, "Oh, it looks like Good Morning America had Will Smith on. We'll oh, have God. That next on. Oh, no. oh, yeah. oh yeah, yes, yes. Oh yeah, oh. and we'd have to scramble to pull that interview. That's why there's four TiVo units in this building, or was we had we were recording every single morning show because he would do that. Oh yeah, he's like, which one was that? His mind. Um, he once he once described it like a lazy Susan, like it was constantly spinning. <laughs> And there was always something that he was picking up and putting down, picking up and putting down. I mean, his mind was built for radio, you know, that we do everything in eight minute segments. It was built for that. That's the way he thought. That's the way he produced. That's the way. And he was always putting things together in real time 
So it, it was fascinating to watch. I mean, we were complete. The way our minds worked were com- completely different. Opposite, yeah. Um, you know, I'm I'm very much a little bit more methodical, and he was great. He loved that adrenaline of get it, let's get it now, let's get it now, and very much that sort of um, that news mentality of if it's there, I've got to have it first. You know, always mm-hmm. trying to get it, yep. always trying oh, to get yeah. it, and then 100 percent originality. I mean, just always writing is like I said before, trying to write fresh jokes, new jokes, figuring out a way to make me laugh. And Jace, you said earlier, and I I just, I meant to say this then, you said, you know, what was it like to work with your husband? And I think about this often with such great gratitude of who gets 10 years of their husband working so, so hard to make you laugh for four hours a day. I mean, I, you know, I'm heartbroken that he's not with me. But at the same time, I look at that, I can only think with gratitude of like, oh, my God, like, I'm just so grateful because he worked, as Paulie knows, he worked really hard to make me laugh. I made him earn it. Oh, Colleen, when you um, when you think of uh, Ian, is there something that floats to the top of the pool for you? Oh, gosh. All the things. So first of all, I'm like an easy, I have like a cry trigger. So I, know. I like came in already. Yeah. <laughs> I knew this was Colleen was texting so me. me I know. <laughs> Colleen was texting <laughs> me all morning. Every time Colleen would cry, she texted me. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, it's, I, I, I always think of the first time I met Ian, um, the station had just gone on the air months before I came in like green as can be. Just wanted to work in radio, didn't really know what I wanted to do, didn't really know what I was capable of doing. And I was <laughs> I was interviewing for a sales position, which I ended up getting, which is comical. Don't even get me started. But <laughs> I came in, I came in the station and I had heard Ian uh on the air. And I had this image in my head of of this like larger than life, like in my mind, very tall, very like, you know, um, uh you know, a person who kind of felt comfortable taking up space. And I walked in and Ian was not tall. No. (laughs) (laughs) Um, But he was sitting in the office of the person with whom I was interviewing. And I walked in for my interview and I'm like, you guys, like, you know, nervous sweats, like I'm a kid. And he stops everything and turns his attention. I know you guys were talking about this earlier, about the way that Ian could make you feel like you were the only person in the world. He turned all of his attention to this, like, who am I, right? Like, I'm nobody to him in this moment. But he, he like zeroed in on me and started asking me questions and talking to me like I was a human being. And it completely disarmed me. It made me so comfortable. It made me ready for the, that's probably why I got the dumb job that I was so (laughs) bad at. Um, (laughs) But now I'm here. And, um, and he, he, kind of was always he was always there he was always a part of the fabric of of this radio station for me from the second i walked in the second i saw him he probably saw a, another person to mentor yes a and, new person I, oh there's a new one <laughs> well and and i know i don't even know what time it is Do you were fine okay. oh, who cares b arthur's not even in the building she it's a go do it she's looking in the window we, right it now it doesn't and matter she has a knife no I'm that's just fine yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's new that too, to Marjorie. 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 Marjorie, yeah. that's new. We have arson yeah. and B. <laughs> Arthur walks around with a knife. <laughs> it's, it's, she's got a knife. <laughs> it's, it's a new This has turned into a very intense place. But, Marjorie, <laughs> but here's what's great. I don't work here, so I can do whatever I want. Okay, so so um speaking of mentoring, like this, and I, I told this story, I wrote about this a little bit earlier. Um mm. about this time that I had been asked to fill in for uh, the former producer of the morning show, brother Rob. And for those of you who know Rob Poulin, he, there was something that he brought to the table that was like his special sauce. And I came into this role not, and I thought, well, I got to be whatever Rob is. Mm. And spoiler alert, I couldn't. (laughs) <laughs> and um, and I remember so well, I mean, I was sitting exactly where Paul is sitting and Ian was sitting where Alexis is sitting and we could see each other and I was struggling and Ian didn't rescue me. He didn't get in the way of me learning what I needed to learn in that moment. And it was the most uncomfortable mm. four hours of my life to date. And he just had this quiet, 
way of letting me struggle through it and and discover what I needed to do and maneuver my way through this this awful terrible experience and then he still loved me after you know he still I always felt I always felt Ian in the corner cheering for me for the rest of my career I could feel Ian he would te- he would send me like little notes on the air years later after he'd retired and I would think he's listening and I always felt him in the corner just cheering us on and that's that is how he mentored um with like a quiet strength and and a and a way of letting people make their mistakes so that so that they could grow mm. even if it didn't feel that way <laughs> Mm-hmm. In the moment. But it was really good about articulating that you're right with a text or an email, like, here's a link. I just thought about you. Yeah. And that was it. Yeah. Yeah. Or I'm listening. I'm yeah. laughing. This is so funny. Yeah. And do to, that. Oh, do more of that. And to hear, to, for Ian to be laughing. I mean, Marjorie, for me, Marjorie's an easy laugh. I, maybe not for Ian. <laughs> but for me. And when Marjorie laughs, it's like, it's oh, like the birds are singing. Yes. It's my best. favorite thing. Um, but to know that Ian was laughing and enjoying himself was a high honor because, because of what you said, Marjorie, about how he worked in his own he was his mind worked like nobody else's no nobody else's and and you had to admire it and to watch it was like you know both probably paul frustrating (laughs) (laughs) but also exhilarating also like amazing right like i didn't have to work directly with it so i could just sit back and be like how does he do that He just said those words yes. on GMA. Right? <laughs> yeah. He he was just so to know that he was cheering for you was was an honor. Paul, what was it like? What, uh, how could you get control? Marjorie referred to it as a lazy Susan. How could you grab a hold of the lazy Susan and stop <laughs> it long enough for you to grab something off it? It it was <laughs> in the moment, it was very frustrating and sort of difficult. But in the later years, he and I had a he could give me a look and I knew what he wanted and I knew where the show was going to go. Um, he and I had this unspoken language where he, I could tell where we were going, where things were headed, where, what he wanted next. It was really very strange. The the best was Polly. Um, (laughs) Polly was in, um, came down to Manhattan, Kansas, which is where I live now for Ian's funeral. And we, Paul and I were laughing because imagine being Paul black, and I don't know that people understand. I was in a studio at home. Ian was in the studio here at the radio station. We could not, Ian and I could not talk to each other off air. We could only talk to each other on the air. So if there was behind Marjorie, the scene- Marjorie, some things haven't changed. Uh, I can't, <laughs> yeah, I, I say, can't man. talk to Alexis and it's 2024. I'm just, go, yeah, it, nothing has changed. So We're, Polly yeah. was in the middle of our marriage if something wasn't going well. Oh, oh Polly, yeah. Would you like to take over? Yes, yes. So. Oh, yeah. Tell us more. Polly, 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 do me a favor. Yes. Polly, hold that thought. Hold that thought. Because, yes. uh. Let's take a break because, oh, God, yeah. I Marjorie, I didn't think about that. He was literally not, not a show. He was in the middle of your marriage. Mm-hmm. We're going to hear more memories from uh, Paul and Colleen as our tribute to Ian continues. We'll be back after this. Remembering the life well lived and the show we loved. Here's another classic Ian Punnett highlight from Ian and Marjorie. Can you tell me, Snooki, when did you realize, okay, I'm famous? Um, pretty much at birth. Oh. I knew it. <laughs> I knew it. So. I started thinking about it, about all the people I know who, from the second they were born, they always knew one day they would be famous. And if I had to be totally honest with you, I'd say that was me. What do you mean? I can't think of a time when I didn't think I wasn't going to be famous. I guess the problem with Snooki is how do you know that when you don't have any discernible talent? I, what, I don't have any discernible talent. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever you say about Snooki sticks on me, too. Okay, I'm going to shut up about Snooki. Girlfriend, I can't do anything right. <laughs> you know it's true. Well, I... <laughs> Ian Snooky Punnett. Oh. Remembering Ian Punnett all day today on My Talk 1071. Welcome back to a special edition of The Morning Show, The Morning Show built by Ian and Marjorie. This is Jason and Alexis in the morning. We're joined by Marjorie 
uh, our dear friends, uh, Colleen Lindstrom and Paul Black. And before the break, uh, Marjorie hinted that more more often than not, uh, poor Paul Black, because of the uh, 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 colonial equipment we're dealing with here, um, basically, we're working in a working museum. Uh, Marjorie would not uh, be able to talk to Ian during the broadcast. And again, as we made Marjorie laugh, uh, things haven't changed. Uh, I still can't talk to Alexis and Alexis can't talk to me. But anyway... Uh, Paul, what was that like? You were, uh, as Marjorie put it, literally in the middle of their marriage. Yes. Um, <clears throat> there were many, because I don't know if anybody ever thought that. Ian and Marjorie is an actual married couple. They are a <laughs> married couple, <laughs> and married couples disagree on things. Yes. And again, so Ian couldn't talk to Marjorie. Marjorie couldn't talk to Ian directly, except live on the air. But they could each talk to me. So I can remember many times, and... <laughs> I'm going to pull out a hypothetical where we'd go to break and Ian would say on my talk 1071, boom. And we'd go to break and Ian would say, uh, ask Marjorie what that was about. Uh, Ian, Ian wants to know what that was about. What, what was about? Uh, Mar Marjorie doesn't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Remind Marjorie that's not how we go to break. Uh, uh, Ian didn't think that's how we should go to break. <laughs> well, tell Ian that's how I go to break. Uh, Marjorie just says that's how she's going to do that. Well, remind Marjorie we're trying to move the show forward. Uh, and, and just thinks uh, we're not moving the show forward. Have him call me. <laughs> when it went to the call, oh, yeah, you knew like, there was oh. a serious conversation that then was going to happen. Then I'm out. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I could my. watch you do that bit all day. All day. <laughs> and I all have, day long. I made him entertain me at lunch once with that because it was so true. Yes. yes. Yep. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. <gasps> That is great. Because for people who may not have picked up on it, I'm a bit of a wild thing. Mm -hmm. And you can't really tame me. <laughs> You're bad Marjorie. Remember that? Yeah, that was oh, bad Marjorie. Always. Bad Marjorie. <laughs> Always. Oh, gosh. I, I, you know, remembering back and all five of us were part, and we referenced this a lot because it was, I, and Marjorie, you've never really heard us talk about this. We always reference the first project down and dirty as a turning point for the station it was magical. um it was really uh, uh now look we we hate it to this day because it started the bosses on again if the bosses think something goes right they go back to the teat until the cow dies and you know what i mean and so oh, yeah. we i mean you know yeah. Yeah, yeah i mean yeah it was 20 2011 and we're oh. still nursing that teat yeah we're sure. still yeah anyway um but it was a turning point, Marjorie. And again, I don't know if you've ever heard us reference this because none of us were really overly close. No. Uh, not for any particular reason, but we didn't, uh, Lex and I, well, Lex knew you guys better because she was here before me, but Lex and I really didn't know you two very well. Lex, I think I can speak for you in that. I mean, not overly familiar. Colleen and Bradley were new. They were a weekend show. Uh, um, we We didn't, I didn't really know them. I knew Bradley, but- um, and, uh, the clean of the boys, I, 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 they were like from Pluto. I mean, you know, they, I, I, they spoke a whole, they spoke their own language. And then you had Lori and Julia who quite literally scared the crap out of us, you know, <laughs> uh, I mean, just scared all of us and <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. I mean, yeah. Uh -huh. yes. Yes. And that first project down and dirty and that, um, I, <laughs> Lex knows where I'm going. Over wine I, slushies. Over <laughs> wine slushies. My goodness. I will, I will never, I will never forget Ian's face. Um, I will not, now, uh, you know, Ian, a good church going, God fearing man. Ordained, Jason. <laughs> or, or ordained. Ordained. In the ordained. That's right. Um, and he's sitting there and we are playing a game. And we've never really told this through Ian's point of view, but this is, this is, I've, I'll, I'm going to include Ian here obviously um lo we were playing a game of who has the craziest life story just like the nuttiest and it can be in any nature as sexual in nature or you did a crazy yep. stunt or whatever and, and it, which direction they all suddenly went in weird yes. weird mm. weird it all went to a sexual nature <laughs> yes. and it went it went it went down to Lori. And it went down to Lori and me. Yeah. And and Are Lori went. No. I can't, re I can't remember Lori's story. So guess whose story was? Uh, yeah. 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 
Um, we won't repeat it? No, no. no. We shan't but, repeat this. Okay. But no, but over the years, I will hint at what Lori's was because Lori has openly talked about this. So I have, Lori was in the middle of some sort of lovemaking and dude fell asleep, okay. like flat out fell asleep. And in some form of, of uh, coochie coo, you know, just right. something. And we all died laughing. Mm -hmm. And now my darling Alexis had known what I had teed up. She knew my story before mm -hmm. any of you. Mm -hmm. And then I come out with my story and I looked over at Ian and there's a punch, not a punchline, but there is a finale to my story. That is like, <laughs> that is exorcist like. That's what I'll say. It's, oh, that's it's, a good way to put it, Jason. It's yeah. exorcist, Linda Blair. Uh, it's exorcist like, and I looked over at Ian and the color left Ian's face. Just, just <laughs> Ian was as white as a, as a ball of cotton. Uh -huh. And, and I then realized, oh my goodness, I'm telling this in front of an ordate, like I'm telling this in front of Ian who I barely know. And oh he God. is looking at me with befuddlement, am amusement and complete fear of what I do. <laughs> and, and can I add, Jason? Yeah. Yes, you were telling that story in front of my husband <laughs> and the other 150 people that were sitting in the wine garden <laughs> with us. And I will never forget, because I really gather a bunch of drunken talk show hosts together. Oh, we're who loud. Have all, who have all fallen in love with each other. At this yeah. point, we're kind of drunk. Except me because he didn't drink. Also, no. he's not. But the rest of us are slightly tipsy. Yes. And we're all like, it's a love fest and we're laughing and we're loud. And I just remember, I think we kind of cleared the wine garden. <laughs> we did. The Minnesota State Fair because people are like taking their children and putting their hands on yes. their ears. Yes. Um, it was like one of the best nights of my life. Absolutely. Oh, <laughs> absolutely. And it changed. It changed yeah. the station. We all. Yeah. Lori and Julia seemed less scary after that night. We got to know you and Ian um, uh, uh, clean. And, you know, it, it was just wonderful. was a, it you were changed. Like mom and dad in the front room, you know? Yep. <laughs> right, Alexis. Trailer, sleeping on, I think we got, well, we got the, the table that turned into a bed that. Because did, of you. Because of, yeah, I went in the wrong door and the uh, details, you know, and then we were on a air mattress at the feet of Low J and then mom and dad were in the front room and yeah. it was just, yeah. And it you guys wonderful. would come out and listen. Oh yeah. It, what, that yeah. was, a, wow. That was a turning point for sure. Absolutely. We're going to take a turning point called a commercial break. Uh, more clips, more memories, uh, more emails from you when we come back. Stay with us. Here's another Ian and Marjorie flashback promo. There's a refreshing subtlety to the morning show wackiness of Ian and Marjorie. Some morning shows like to do obnoxious prank phone calls. And then there's Marjorie. She's got Phil Donahue's cell phone number, and she won't give it to me because I want to call him and just ask him if we can be friends. <laughs> That's a good premise for a phone call. Hey, we did a random promotional thing for your movie, and I never want it to end. <laughs> So can I be your friend so we can keep talking? <laughs> it sounds, it sounds kind of needy, doesn't it? No. Marjorie, I have his home number, too. Oh. Hello, Marlo. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Marjorie. I can't tell you how much I want to do it. Ian and Marjorie, living life and their marriage out loud. I don't know what's wrong with me. I really think that I'm slipping towards some sort of edge. On FM 107.1. Here's another classic Ian Punnett highlight from Ian and Marjorie. Good morning, Chloe Kardashian Odom, or just Chloe Odom. It's got a cool ring yeah. to it, you know? I like that. No one ever calls me just Chloe Odom, I'm, and I kind of kick and scream, but uh, you did it. I'm calling you Chloe Odom all morning long. I've been promoting <laughs> you as Chloe Odom since we went on the air this morning. Yay! Yay! I think it's really cool, and I think, and, and there's nothing wrong with Kardashian. You know, I'm down with the Armenians, right? I'm cool. Woo -hoo. But, and I, I Chloe Odom, now still of the the best looking and the most successful of the uh, the Kardashian sisters. Are you talking to me? <laughs> <laughs> of course, he's talking to you. Of course, oh, he's okay. talking to you. If another sister was on the line, I got. <laughs> Remembering Ian Punnett all day today on My Talk 1071. And welcome back to a special tribute here on the morning show, the show that Ian and Marjorie built right here on My Talk. Everything entertainment, everything Ian. I'm Jace with Lex and Holly. We're joined by our friend Marjorie family hmm. uh family member marjorie punnett 
uh, Colleen Lindstrom. Well, Lex, they barely got through security, oh. but fine. Yeah, I mean, Colleen Lindstrom and Paul Black. I mean, let's. There's an asterisk there, Lex. There's an asterisk with those two. I mean, oh, okay, uh, okay, yeah. the security guard had to <laughs> wand them. If you have to be wanded to come in the yeah, building, you're not yeah, family. I mean, twice. No, not twice. I, am, no, I am family because I had to text the security guard to say, "Can you help me get in?" Because I have her phone number. You yeah. wanted twice, Polly. Yeah. Hot, Polly, hot, lucky. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Hey, can I um, say something about Chloe real quickly? Yeah. Do you mind? No, you go, Jace. I think I, int- I, I no, you girl. You. It's your show again. You're on. You're still on paperwork. You still <laughs> basically. We're yes. subletting this damn thing from you. So go ahead. No, what tell? I don't well, care. I, I loved hearing Chloe because she was one of my favorite Kardashians to interview. And it just reminded me hearing that. And this is why I'm so grateful to the station for pulling up all these clips. One of the things Ian did so beautifully is we get offered in radio, particularly you're in the mornings, you get offered these people and you you get offered celebrities and they come on because they're promoting something. And Ian always loved to throw them off their game. Like you can promote Mm. that for a moment. That's Mm. the exchange, but we're not going to swirl around in that. We're not going to stay in that. And so part of what he would always do is find something really unique to do with the talent. And one of my favorite things was Jimmy Carter had written a book of poetry and I didn't know because I wasn't paying attention. And all morning long, he's like, I've got a special thing for you. Top of the hour, eight o'clock. You know, somebody's going to read you some poetry. And I'm like, yawn. Great. Thanks. That's going to be good. Great bit, Ian. So out of the box at the top of the hour, this man just starts reading poetry and it was Jimmy Carter. Oh Oh my gosh. And it was just, he would do these really unique things with the celebrities so that we would see them in a different way. When he was at WGN in Chicago, he used to have a segment Mm. at eight o'clock at night where he, because he was sad, he couldn't read bedtime stories to the boys. He would have celebrities pick their favorite children's book and have them read a book. And it's called Book at Bedtime. And it was so unique and it was such an insight to the celebrity because you know so much about somebody when they tell you this was my favorite children's book. Mm. So I just, he was always so good. And that's hard to do. That's hard to do with publicists, time constraints. And I didn't mean to interrupt you, but to celebrate what Ian did for, uh, for the listeners listening, you should know that's not easy to do. The easy thing is to lean on. Tell me how you got this role. You know what I mean? That's the easy thing to do. Right. Yeah. Anyway, so it's just fun to hear Chloe. Because then they can share something else about themselves. Yes, Lex. And if I could just punctuate this by saying the other thing about Ian is if a publicist came back to him about that, he would not (laughs) care. He was not thinking about that, right? Like that was never... No, there are some green people in radio. I would have been this person who would have been like, well, we got to keep the publicist happy, right? Because Mm -mm. then... Ian did not care. No. No. Everything was in service of the bit. Everything was in service of the punchline. Of being interesting. Of being interesting and and, and entertaining. Now, this is what I want people to hear, too. Everything, and I'm talking to the listeners, everything was about you. Yeah. It was always about you. What was the payoff for you? And so, you know, we know when we're behind these microphones that we're not saving lives, doing surgery, whatever. But... Making people happy is honestly the joy of this job. And Ian punctuated that, put an exclamation point on that for everybody. And one in particular, as we get uh, emails from you. You've got mail. Marjorie, this is for you from Madeline. Madeline writes, uh, hi, Marjorie. I grew up listening to Ian and Marjorie on my way to school with my mom. She made me a my talker for life, as did (laughs) Ian and Marjorie. Um, Ian always managed to put a smile on my face, as did Marjorie. I clearly remember a time, and please, Marjorie, correct me if I have any details wrong, when Ian had some sort of surgery or something and was on some sort of painkiller, and Marjorie was trying really, 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 really hard um, to get off the air or in the show quickly. She was so sweet, and he took it with grace. They were awesome in my talk. I cried uh, that day laughing and I'm crying for a different reason today. Mm. We love you, Marjorie. Yeah. That yeah. was a morning. Paulie <laughs> <laughs> and I are looking at each other like, uh, yeah, he had, uh, he had had a medical procedure and I still don't understand it to this day, but the drugs were still in his system. Oh my goodness. It was very strange. And he got up that morning. I'm like, sweetie, you cannot go to work. <laughs> 
oh, no. fine. And my son had swim practice in the morning at Hamlin. And so I'm like, you know, Gar, you've got to drive him to work because he's not going to get in that car. And then Gar tells the story of like <laughs> delivering him to the door and like, see you, dad. <laughs> see ya. And then that, and then it was Polly's problem. And yeah. Polly yeah. just, I remember Polly in the morning and he's like, uh, he's asleep on the mic. <laughs> oh, gosh. So that's oh, enough of that story. Oh, but it wow. Was, we got oh. him off the air by like 6.15. That. He refused yeah. to leave. No, I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. So yeah. that new Simpsons DVD came out yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. get we, him off the air! But, but then, no, in, in typical Ian fashion, the next day we replayed the clips of him in the morning from six to six ten, <laughs> and we laughed so hard. Everything yeah. was about how do we recycle it? Is this funny? It didn't yeah. matter that he was out of his head. Yeah. It was no. funny. It was funny, and we laughed so hard the next day. We have another clip before we break here that Marjorie uh, would like to play. Uh, in our collection of clips that Rocco beautifully curated uh, for hours and hours. Uh, but we should say we wanted to make this uh, worthwhile in a variety of ways. And one of them is to uh, give back, as Ian always did. So we are raising money for the Ronald McDonald House. This was important for uh, to Marjorie for us to do. And we know that you will take this and run with it, listeners. So go to mytalk1071.com right now and uh, give to the Ronald McDonald House. It's a charity that meant means meant a lot to all of us here at my talk. So thank you, you in advance. At my talk, There's a picture of you and Marjorie. Just click on that. And a big thank you to Schuler shoes. They've already donated a thousand dollars. Yeah. Shoes. yeah. They're the best. <laughs> Schuler shoes. Okay. Now Marjorie, I have, uh, it's like Casey Kasem. I have heard you, you put in your request. I did. Uh, you have a, cause again, Rocco pulled like 8,000 <laughs> clips. And one of them, is you, um, I think, sn uh, snoring? He caught you snoring? Is he that recorded, the one you want? Oh, he no. recorded me snoring. And to this day, people still mention this. And I haven't heard it since I heard it live. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's do this. Uh, where is that one? Um, ba -ba, yawning, belching. Okay, let's oh. do this. Let's take a break. Yawning, belching, <laughs> yeah. snoring. No, I'm serious. Right there. Yeah. I know. That's the show. I'm... I'm <laughs> I'm going through all of them, and Rocco, Rocco beautifully named them all of these things, and and they're like, yell, uh, belching, uh, blah blah blah. And uh, let me just see before we take a break. I just want to make sure we have that one. Uh, it is. Are you looking at the board, Jason? Yeah, I'm looking okay. at the board. Yeah, let's take a break. I'll okay. find that, and then uh, we have some fun clips uh, to wrap up this uh, portion of the uh, of the tribute. And Alexis and I have something to say to Marjorie, so we'll be right back. Stay with us. Here's another Ian and Marjorie flashback promo. Ian and Marjorie do the morning show on My Talk 1071 together. They are married to each other for now. Gail wrote on the subject of mandatory Father's Day sex. Mm -hmm. Duh, where have you two been? <laughs> uh, Heidi, true for you? I am not only required to do so, I am required to step it up a notch with either <laughs> a request or by my own surprising. <laughs> on Father's Day? So what would be? What? My husband would rather have really good sex than any probably materialistic thing. So you you're saying is if you give him a tie for Father's Day, it better end up around your wrists. <laughs> now you know for next year, you're going to have to step it up. So you're probably going to want to get Ian a couple of ties. Uh, you, <laughs> you know what? I don't have to step it up. You know what? Yes, no. I can even send you a couple little toys with batteries in it. No thanks. <laughs> I'm good. You're very generous. <laughs> Ian and Marjorie. Nothing needed here. On my talk, 1071. Here's another classic Ian Punnett highlight from Ian and Marjorie. Have you ever experienced love at first sight? Uh, yes. Okay. All right. Uh, and I don't know who that guy is, but I guess he's very lucky. Mm -hmm. uh, and 54% uh, of men say they've experienced love right. at first sight. Have you? Yeah, I did. I proposed to you the first moment I met you. Remember? <laughs> I do remember. Okay. So that, we're married. Okay. But I mean, that was that, that, that was my proof of that. <laughs> so, right. Yeah. My proof of that was I accepted. Six months, six months later, after yeah. you broke up with the other guy. I'm a slow processor. <laughs> But I accepted, didn't I? <laughs> Despite all odds. Uh, and the odds against that one were, were what? What were all odds? Uh, not this morning. What were, what, against not all odds morning. meaning what? It's the weekend. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Remembering Ian Punnett all day today on My Talk 1071. 
And it begins right here on the show that they built. Welcome back. Jason and Alexis in the morning on this Wednesday, March 13th. Another great clip from the Ian and Marjorie show. Don't forget, in honor of Ian, you can donate right now to the Ronald McDonald House uh, on mytalk1071.com. And we thank a, a friend of Ian and Marjorie, Schuler Shoes, um, a longtime partner uh, for their contribution already. Thank you, Schuler Shoes. I want that laugh from the end of that clip. Yes. That was so mm-hmm. wonderful. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. You got yep. him laughing it was too, a Marjorie. Genuine <laughs> Ian Punnett belly laugh. Mm-hmm. It was amazing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, speaking of belly laughs, we have a few clips that we want to try to get. And I knew this would happen. This went way too fast. We could spend another three hours with you, with uh, you, Colleen and Paul and Marjorie. But um, r- this was a request from Marjorie. I found both of them. This is a, another classic clip. Uh, this is when Ian recorded Marjorie snoring. Take a listen to this. <laughs> This is the apex of my day right now. Nothing will get better from this point forward. So last night when I was I was having a dream and I was in my dream, I was disturbed by a bunch of cows in our house. <laughs> and then I woke up and then I realized Marjorie was mooing in her sleep. So I grabbed my iPhone and I recorded it because I knew she'd never believe me. Absolutely not. Okay. Not in your life. <laughs> I'm mooing. not sure I believe you now. <laughs> and now here's the sound of actual cows. <laughs> I, I, I'm surprised that you didn't uh, wake up and demand that I milk you. I, that's right, that's, right. that's, that's pretty good. Priceless. That's pretty I good, Bessie. That <laughs> Do you remember that, Paul? I remember yeah. that morning because I had to find the cow clips. <laughs> uh. <laughs> and I warned him not to do that Do that bit. I said, ah, is that a good idea, Ian? I don't think that's a good idea. Uh, again, get in the middle of the marriage, uh, Paul. Get in the middle of the marriage. I was trying. He, he went ahead and did it. Anyway, it Marjorie, hilarious. what do you remember about that day? Uh, I, I, st- I could not believe that was me. <laughs> like, who said? Uh, yeah. Who me. did that? It was me. <laughs> Uh, uh, Paul, we do. Rocco pulled some clips that includes you. I want to give you. It's a choose your own adventure, and then Lex and I have something we want to say to Marjorie. Uh, and you're going to hear a little bit of Ian's final broadcast here on my talk. But here, uh, Paul, here you go. Would you like to hear Ian quizzing Marjorie uh, and Paul about classic rock? Okay. A clip described as self pleasure at work, oh. or, or a clip described as trading favors in the relationship. You gotta go with number two. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's, that's easy. Okay. Uh, that would be, let's see here. It's uh, doing it. Uh, Rocco called it doing it, oh, which is hysterical. No. Here's her full statement. It got so bad, I would pleasure myself up to 47 times a day. That's when I asked for help. I knew it wasn't normal. Yeah, at 47? <laughs> 45 still normal. 35. You're still thinking, <laughs> I'm good. Isn't everybody doing this? Uh, How many people are actually doing this at work? Honestly, he acts like that, that that's something that's even a norm here. Paul? Okay. Okay. Hold you know what? Yes. And the answer is. Okay, Paul. <laughs> Oh, goodness. Oh, oh. that was great, Paul. Nicely done. Paul. Nicely. Oh, my gosh. Some fine timing there, Paul. Yeah. Oh. Wait, um, I have to ask a question because I have to know this. Who played the, the sounders? Like, who was playing mm. the porn music and the ding? Was that you, Paul? Uh, I had the, in that particular clip, I had the ding. Ian had the porn music. Okay, yeah. that's yeah. so, I They're love that. perfect. Game yeah. Game yeah. Mark. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And so what great. a strange sentence that is. I know. Yeah. I had the porn right. music. And I, I had, had the, the ding. ding. Had the d- Welcome hey. to morning radio. Yay. Uh, it sounds like it wasn't just the ding. <laughs> uh, yeah, seriously. Marjorie, uh, r- real quick. Uh, again, we have two more clips we want to, we want to get in before we get pushed out of here by B. Arthur. Can you explain for maybe new listeners of my talk uh, what Happy Boy was? Because it's it's what we're getting the most emails about. Can you quickly explain what exactly Happy Boy was? Happy Boy was, uh, uh, I think Ian would tell a joke every morning before we would go to the 8 o'clock break. Because it coincided with mothers and fathers dropping their kids off at school. So if you were listening, 
to my talk 1071 you could you could hear the joke you could laugh in the car together with your kids and then you know send them off to school and ian did it specifically for all of the kids in the twin cities but most specifically for our sons, because I would take a break from 7.45 to 8 o'clock and drive our sons to school. So the boys and I would sit in the car and they would hear their dad send them off to school with a laugh and a smile. Here's a little bit of the Happy Boy song. I was walking down the street on a sunny day. Hubba, 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 hubba. A feeling in my bones says I have my way. Hubba, 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 hubba. Oh, I'm a happy boy. Happy boy. I'm a happy boy. Happy boy. Oh, ain't it good when things are going your way? Hey, hey. Yeah, my little dog Spot got hit by a car. Hubba, 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 hubba. <laughs> put his guns <laughs> in a box and put him in a drawer. Hubba, 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 hubba. That's a little bit of the Happy Boy song. <laughs> and I think we cut off the last it part. Went dark. Yeah, yeah, it's fine. I don't think we used the dark Ooh, part. I never yeah. used well, that part. Yeah, well, no, no, no. Well, bef- our, before our time is up, Marjorie, oh. Alexis and I were talking, and if it would be okay with you, um, in honor of Ian, Lex and I would like to bring back Happy Boy oh. on our on our show every day. That would be lovely. He so, would love that. He would so, love that. We will do it uh, just like Ian did. We'll rely on Alexis for the dad jokes, but we will do it. Um, cut, out, uh, cut, cut out the dead dog part. Yeah. Oh, okay, we will. Holly, don't, don't Holly, could you parts. cut off the dead? When yeah. we submit don't that, can we? Part. No. We, yeah. Just put a sensor beep over it. That yeah. Yeah. Just Thank you. Let, let's let's have a meeting. I remember how <laughs> that song went. I can help you. Yeah, let's that. have yeah. a meeting. Yeah. Perfect. Have yeah. A meeting. But if that would be all right with you. That's 100% all right. It's in good hands. It's in, we just thought it would be a great way to pay tribute to Ian and the show that he built every single day on our show. And how uh, we've I messed it up that. since then. Okay. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah. Uh, we've we'll messed it up. Yeah. Right. Exactly. <laughs> here's, here's a, here's oh. a little bit uh, of Ian's last uh, a few, a minute and a half on my talk when he signed off in 2013. Let's take a listen to this before we have to say goodbye. Deus te amat. And I do too. And we do too. Hey, it's Colleen, and I do too. It's Jason, and right back at you, buddy. Hi, it's Stephanie Hansen, and I do too. Hi, this is Rusty Gaten B, and I do too. Hey, it's the Rook from 1500. Ian, remember, I knew you when you were broadcasting from the attic of your house in Atlanta. And hey, I do too. Hey, it's Marley, and I do too. Hey, it's Reavers. Remember me? I do too. Hey, Ian, this is General Manager Dan Seaman, and I do too. Hey, it's Phil and Laurie. And Phil and Julia. And, and we Phil do too. too. And so do we. <laughs> I do too. Hey, sexy pants. It's Kenny. That goes for me too. Hey, Brad Satin here, and I do too. Ian is our one. And I do too. And I do too. Me too. <laughs> Hi, it's Vanita Sakar, and I do too. It's Alexis. What they said. Hey, it's Brad, and I do too. Hey, it's Amy Daniels, program director at My Talk 1071, and I do too. Hey, it's me, Sonia, general sales manager. I do too. And I do too. It's been said that each of us can influence up to 250 people in our lifetimes. How will you be influential? Be bold and mighty unseen forces will come to your aid. I love you all. And there it is. That's Ian signing off. Uh, for the last time uh, here on my talk. And I know we we <laughs> almost made it. Like, we almost made it. We got to restock in here. <laughs> we almost made it. So, yeah. Marjorie, thank you. Thanks. Thank, thank you, you on behalf of all of us. Thank you for coming in today and sharing your husband with us. And thanks for just being a great member of our family. <laughs> thank you. It's been really, really lovely to laugh. We love you. We love you too. <laughs> and oh. Paul and uh, Colleen Security would like yeah, you to leave you, now. Mom. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. So I had to end it. <laughs> I know. We had to end it. Ian would not like us to be all um, um, yes. maudlin. So, Paul, Colleen, your security uh, pass, uh, your visitor love pass you. is expired. Yeah. Expired. <laughs> You'll be back, Marjorie. <laughs> Marjorie will be back. Today. That's right. <laughs> Thank you. Bye, everybody. <laughs>